So good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Community Central. My name is Brian Proffitt with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to go over the usual housekeeping notes. Um, if you're not familiar with this tool, we do have a Q&A section within the Blue Jeans primetime meeting area. Um, so if you have any questions for our guest after he is done with his presentation, by all means, get your questions in there. Vote on the ones that you like the most. We'll ask them in most light order after the presentation. So housekeeping out of the way, without any further ado, I am very pleased to welcome Phil Katanak, um, who is an engineering manager coming to us from Newcastle, England, um, and he works with the Red Hat Middleware Group. Phil, good day and welcome to Community Central. Great stuff. Nice to be here. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, well, if you're ready to go, we are ready to listen. Okay, thank you. Welcome, everybody. So today, what I want to do is just to give you an overview of the Tackle project within the Conveyor organization, and give you some hints how to get started with using Tackle or consuming Tackle, provide some overview of the guiding principles with regards to being part of that community, and give you a demonstration of the first applications that we've developed within Tackle, and that's the application imagery and the Pathfinder applications. And I'll also briefly discuss some of the other initiatives under the Tackle umbrella. So this next slide just provides a little bit of context about where Tackle sits amongst all of the other tools within the Conveyor organization. So Tackle is used to do the initial assessment of applications and to determine the application modernization and migration outcome. So whether to rehost or re-platform or refactor, or indeed retain, retire, or repurchase those applications. And then once those outcomes are known, um, the other tooling within the Conveyor organization can be used to execute on those decisions. So we have Crane to migrate applications between Kubernetes clusters. We have Hook Forklift to migrate VMs across to Kubert. We've got the Move to Kube project that allows you to migrate applications from other technologies to Kubernetes. So this is things like Delta Swarm or Cloud Foundry across on Kubernetes. And then Tackle again can be used for doing refactoring. So we have the migration toolkit for applications, which is the downstream product for the upstream windup project. And windup will be coming part of Tackle later this year. And wind up I'll be demonstrating briefly later today, but basically it allows you to automate the analysis of applications in order to refactor them. And then sitting across all of these things is Polaris, which allows you to measure the impact of the changes on your software delivery performance. This is where to go to get started. This is what we refer to as the landing repository within the Tackle project, so github.com conveyor tackle, and that will provide links to the other repos under Tackle and describe what their purposes are. I'll not labor on this slide because it's covered later on in the presentation. The guiding principles about being part of the conveyor community and Tackle in general are as follows. We want to use Tackle as the project to bring together all of the application modernization and migration tools. There's lots and lots of tools out there, some proprietary, some open source, and what we want to bring, bring to do is use Tackle to bring all these things together. We want to make them easy to consume, so operators or templates, easy to integrate, and to deliver a really cohesive user experience. We want them to be developed and maintained by a vibrant community with effective governance. There's a lot of work going on into, into defining the governance structure for, for Conveyor and encouraging people to, to contribute to that community. We want to be dependent upon other open source projects rather than any commercial product. So, for example, within Tackle, we use um, the Keycloak open source project for providing authentication authorization rather than the downstream Red Hat SSO. Um, also, they will be built for Kubernetes APIs rather than any Kubernetes enterprise distribution. So, good examples would be Kubernetes ingresses rather than OpenShift routes. We will have Kubernetes catalogs or deploying the applications rather than OpenShift templates, that kind of thing. We want all of these tools to be extensible and customizable, and we expect them to be solid and reliable. So extensive unit tests, integration tests, and lots of manual testing will be undertaken to make sure these projects are all very robust. 
So the next thing I want to do is just talk about the application of being in Pathfinder. I've just got a couple of slides on this before I dive into a demonstration. So bear with me. So the application inventory I'll start with. This is used to maintain a portfolio of applications. And really it's the home and the natural integration point for all of the AMM tooling. So what we see the application inventory being is, is the vehicle via which applications can be assessed using Pathfinder and analyzed via windup. And we also use it as the integration point for other applications that will be added to the TAPL portfolio. Applications can be linked to business services that they support. And um, so we have a dedicated business service entity that we can link to applications and all the application interdependencies can be declared and managed. And through the use of the tagging model, which is another part of the controls, and I'll touch on this and demonstrate it, um, users can define metadata that allows them to categorize their applications in multiple different dimensions. And the real thing about the application inventory that makes it different from a lot of the other AMM tooling is that we hope that the application inventory will have utility far beyond the scope of just an AMM project, but people will use this application for managing their application portfolio in the medium term, and not just for the duration of an AMM project. Pathfinder. Pathfinder is a questionnaire-based tool and allows you to assess applications for their suitability for deployment in containers within an enterprise Kubernetes platform. So this is the, the tool that's used to make the decision whether to rehost your platform, refactor, et cetera. Through the interaction with the questionnaire and the review process, the system is enriched with the knowledge about the applications and that information is exposed through a collection of reports. And I'll demonstrate this process in a few moments. The reports provide information about the suitability of the applications for containerization. They highlight any risks. And they also produce things like an adoption plan, which is informed by effort priority and dependencies as to the order of the migrations can occur. And unlike the application inventory, this will only have utility for the duration. Controls. These are just a collection of entities that add value to the, and metadata to the application applications. So it's things I've mentioned, such as business services, tag types, and the, and, the, and the tags. Tag types are just a vehicle for grouping tags together. Stakeholders, these are the people who have a vested interest in these applications and a state in, their, in the um, successful migration or modernization of those applications. We have a collection of job functions, which are predefined stakeholder roles, but these can be uh, adjusted and added to depending upon a business organization structure. And we also have stakeholder groups, which is just a vehicle for grouping together stakeholders that have shared common interests. Okay then, so that's enough theory. Let's have a look at the applications in action and show you what's been demonstrated to date. I'll go into our tackle test environment. And what you can see here is the application inventory. And um, all of the, the applications will have a common look and feel, all of these controls, application inventory and everything else that we have to tackle will, will have a, the same user experience in terms of how it's presented using Pattern Fly 4, how they, to navigate, how to sort data, filter data, all those sorts of things. So you can see this is a list of applications within my application inventory. These are the ones that have been created already. And you can use the Chevron button if you want to see a little bit more information about any application. So this particular application, which is a savings application, um, has some tags that describe the application in terms of the technologies that um, it uses and also how it's, which runtime it uses. These tags are, you can add as many tags as you like, and I'll discuss the tags in a little bit more detail in a second. Uh, obviously, we have the pagination controls that allow you to you know, work your way through all of the applications in your inventory, and this is, a, this is architecturally is what's known as a single page application. The filtering capability is extremely useful and powerful for grouping applications together that have some shared common characteristics. So for example, if I wanted to filter by, um, say, the business service that the application supported, I was just interested in what insurance applications, you will see the subset of applications that are linked to the business service. Um, if I wanted to distill that list down even further, and just look at the applications that perhaps potentially use the, the programming language of JavaScript. Then I can add an additional section criteria by tag and choose JavaScript as the language. And then you will see there's only one of the motor insurance applications actually has JavaScript as a tag. Yeah. 
OK, then to, you can selectively remove the filters or clear all filters and that will return you back to the original list. It's very easy to edit an application and change some of the characteristics. So you just click on the scribe button in order to um, make some changes to the any individual application. Or if you wanted to create a new application, it's as simple as using the create new button. So here I'll create a new application called Sport Generator. Front end, FE, and it's for the core generation interface. Uh, it's for the motor insurance business service, and we will add a few tags in terms of to use, use this JavaScript. It's deployed on Windows Server 2016, and we could add some comments if we chose to. Obviously, we'll be looking to extend the, the, the additional properties that's available on our application. So in the future, we're having things like it will be repositories and things of that nature. We want to make uh, this model entirely extensible. OK, then, so you get a toaster notification when you've created a new uh, application or generator front end. And what I could do is then define some dependencies between that and the code generator back. Yeah. So let's have a look. Manage dependencies. Add a southbound dependency to the code generator back. Yeah. The close. And now, if I look at the code generator front end, back end rather, you will see a dependency to the code generator front end as well. Yeah. So. Um, just thought worth demonstrating there. Right, so that's that's how we interact with the application imagery. And what we're also looking to do is provide a user interface um, upload facility whereby a CSV file of data can be ingested automatically. So when the user goes through the initial setup of the application imagery, it's very easy to ingest the data from an external source. The controls. Uh, provide data that allow you to add value to the application inventory and also contribute to um, the assessment process through Pathfinder. And the controls are here. And you can see at the moment we have five different um, uh, control entities, which are stakeholders, stakeholder groups, job functions, business services, tags. Um, very much the same look and feel and, and way of interacting with the entities as, as what you've seen already. You can see a little bit more detail behind each stakeholder. Each stakeholder has got um, a key, which is their, their email address, a display name, which is used in the rest of the system. And also they're linked to a, a particular job function. The job functions um, are just another entity. And we have a, a predefined set of job functions that or installed as standard when you install the application for the first time, but it can be maintained and adjusted as whatever suits the, the nature of the business. We have a list of business services, which are the business services that the application support. And each business service has a nominated business service owner. And the most interesting part of the controls, the most powerful part of the controls, really. Yeah. And what you can see here is a list of tag types. Yeah, and then within each tag type, you have a list of tags. Yeah, so there are seven different um, programming language languages that were defined within the language tag type. Each tag type is given a rank, so that's the order left to right that they appear on the application imagery. They are provided with a color, which is the background color that, that the tags have on the application imagery, and this is to provide a little bit of context. Um, about what each each of the tag types represents. And we also have a count of the number of tags within that group. As before, it's very, very easy to create a new tag type. So I could create one called, say, region, for example. Uh, give it a rank, yes, it, and select the color. And then if I want to add some tags to that tag type, very easy to do. Type, which is region. Create another one. A pack. And there we are. It's as simple as that. So two new tags with a new tag type. 
And when I return back to the application inventory, I could potentially um, edit an existing application and add, it, add one of those tags. So let me do that now. And it's as easy as that. Okay then. So the next thing to do is probably just give you a brief overview of the assessment process through the Pathfinder questionnaire. Um, the way that this application has been developed, there was an original version of Pathfinder. And what we are trying to do is provide a super set of the functionality within the original version of Pathfinder. Um, and we are sort of about two thirds way through our development journey. So we have the assessment process implemented within the new system. Uh, but when I brought you through the report side of going back to the old system, it's just to provide because the reports haven't been implemented in Tackle yet. So I want to give you the full picture, but not necessarily, um, well, I can't demonstrate everything using the new system just yet because some of these things are still in progress. Right. -o. So to do an assessment, you set an application that you want to assess. That will enable the assess button. And then you can click on the assess button. And that will invoke the Pathfinder questionnaire process. You will see that all of the um, questions are grouped into categories. And as the user completes each section of the questionnaire, the, um, they will move on to the next section of the questionnaire and ultimately the questionnaire will be completed. And that will lead to the review process, which allows you to make the decision about whether to refactor, replatform, rehost, retire, etc. So the first step in the process is to just define the list of stakeholders that are interested in assessing the application. And the way this would be done would be typically there would be some sort of technical lead that would be using the driving the engagement. And the technical lead could be a Red Hat consultant, for example, and they would be bringing, bringing in subject matter experts from the business that have a vested interest and deep knowledge about these applications. And what it's worthwhile doing is just defining you know, who's involved in this in this review process. So there's an absolute audit, there's a concrete audit trail, who contributed to this assessment and who was who was party to the decisions that were made. Yeah. So in, what I'll do is I'll add a couple of um well, a couple of stakeholder groups, audit security, and the motor sure group, I could actually, you know, add an individual stakeholder as well. Supposing Alex Thrifson was doing was driving the driving the engagement, so it might be worthwhile adding him as an individual. So we've got our stakeholders and our stakeholder groups defined, and then you go through the questionnaire process. And essentially, each page of the questionnaire process is is very very similar in terms of we have a number of a number of questions that fall into a particular question category, and in order for the user to be able to move on to the next stage in the assessment, what they must do is provide answers to each of these questions. And the way the data is structured is that some of the answers to these questions will inform risks, a sort of use like a red, amber, green status based upon the, the, the option that the user chose. And then these, these risks are exposed as part of the reporting process. Yeah. So as well as answering specific questions, uh, there's, within each section, there's also the ability to add some additional notes um, within the section. So I'll just, just add a note there. Yeah. And then once once you've answered, answered the questions, you click on the next button and, and on, on you go. One of the key things about this application is we want to make all this questionnaire entirely extensible, so it's very easy to interchange the questions um, that have been defined here, the ship ones with ones that you want to use yourself. Also, um, it's designed to be internationalizable. So if you wanted to run this application in another language other than English, then it's very easy to do that as well. Okay, then I'll not go through all of the questions in the questionnaire. Um, I'll just go back to the application inventory. Um, and now I'll, what I'll do is I'll nip across into the old Pathfinder system so you can see um, the outcome of completing the questionnaire and what that means in terms of the reports. Yeah. So what I've done here is just um, selected five applications that all have a motor insurance type flavor to them. So this is the motor insurance subsection of the application inventory. And we've been through the assessment process and we've done 
um, the assessment and the review. And basically what we've decided that we're going to do is, is rehost, what is your authenticator, we platform the next two and we factor the next two. And as part of the review process, what you must do is, as well as making a decision, you also must determine the amount of effort doing that particular migration and define what the business criticality is and the priority of these applications. And once all that information is available to Pathfinder, it provides you with some reports. It gives you like an overall landscape of your applications and, and the risk factors and, and whether they are cloud native ready or not, or require an extensive amount of work to get made them cloud ready. And then you've got this two dimensional grid, which is informed by the risk factors, you know, identified through the questions and the business criticality of these applications. And the arrows also show the interdependencies, so the north and south bound dependencies that I demonstrated earlier. Um, and then we've got a suggested adoption plan. So this adoption plan, the length of the bars are informed by the size of the effort and the location of the bars are a reflection of the dependencies. Yeah. Finally, at the bottom, we've got a list of identified risks. These are risks that have been um, highlighted through the completion of the questionnaire. Okay then. So this is the one part of the application that hasn't been as well, it's only partially implemented within Tackle and Pathfinder, but it will be fully implemented by the end. Okay then, I hope that all makes sense. Um, I'm very conscious of the time. Now, let me just return back to my presentation and I'll just go through a few other things as well. Okay. Now, so, what else is going on within Tackle and Pathfinder, the other projects within Tackle, what's, what's coming soon? So, as I mentioned before, Windup, uh, the Migration tool for, Toolkit for Applications, that, which is the product name, which is the automated source code analysis, that's the very next thing that, that we want to integrate into, into Tackle. There's a containerization assessment tool, which is artificial intelligence based container recommend, recommendation uh, application. We have an application configuration discovery tool, which tries to map existing con application configuration on the source platform across to the corresponding configuration on the target platform. We have a test-driven driven modernization tool, um, which gives the users comfort that all of the testing tests that you executed against the on the original platform also complete successfully and provide parity on the target platform. And then we also have a data intensive validity advisor, also known as Diva. And um, that tool is all about defining the relationships between applications and the data sources and transactions within the applications. So briefly discuss these as it is probably isn't time to go into any in-depth uh, in depth demonstration of these tools. So this is very much available at the moment to be consumed. Um, wind up migration toolkit for applications. This this is a tool that's based around enterprise Java applications. He compiles and analyzes Java applications, and it executes a series of extensible rule sets to identify migration issues. It creates a rich set of reports, and it supports numerous migration paths. So the background for wind up was it was used to um, migrate applications away from the WebSphere or WebLogic across onto JBoss EAP and support JBoss EAP upgrades. But it's got a lot more migration paths now. It supports cloud native assessments, um, Spring Boot to Quartus, Quartus migrations, Camel 2 to Camel 3, Oracle JDK to Open JDK. There's a really nice set of rules, thousands of rules that support multiple top. And the good thing about it is it's easy to consume. There's, there's a CLI and a Web UI, which is very intuitive to use. There's an operator for OpenShift, and we've also got plugins for five different IDEs. So we've got Code Ready Studio, Eclipse, VS Code, and Eclipse Share are already available. And um, in, within the second half of the, well, within, by the end of the second quarter, we will have an IntelliJ extension as well. Um, as I say, it's going to be integrated in the application really later this year. So that's very much the next thing to do in, in Q3. As I say, these are all the different use cases that Windup supports. 
this is an example of one of the reports that it generates. So we'll analyze a single application there. It's identified you know, a number of story points to migrate the application to the target platform and give me a breakdown of the actual incidents, all of the issues that the rules generate. And then this is the actual issue detail report that shows you which source code files need to change and the nature of the changes with links to supporting documentation. Then you can actually see those issues in the context of the actual source code as well. Yeah. Um, so as I say, this is all, all stuff that's available to consume right away. Containerization assessment. This is an AI approach for assessing applications portfolio for containerization. The plan is to integrate this into the application inventory. And what we will do is we'll use the application tags to provide input. So we will provide a curated set of pre-shipped technology tags that when linked to the applications will be recognized by container assessment tool. The container assessment tool will recommend the appropriate container and also provide a degree of confidence as to um, the, how strong that recommendation is. Application configuration discovery is about discovering all of the existing application configuration properties and then mapping those configuration properties across onto the target platform. Test driven modernization is probably best illustrated by the, the process flow on the bottom there. Um, it assesses the test coverage on the legacy application and generates additional tests if needed. It executes test cases on the legacy application, and then it adapts and migrates those test cases to the modernized application. And once those tests have been executed on the modernized application, you, it does a comparison of the results of the before and after. And that obviously should provide parity and comfort of the users that the application is performing as expected. See, this is having a lot of benefit for EMM projects. And finally, we've got the data intensive validity advisor. And the first point on this slide is my favorite one in that. So this has already been added to uh, the conveyor community and uh, work is in progress on this. What it is, it's a command line tool for data centric application analysis. Uh, it imports application source code and then generates database or transaction related analysis. Um, the analysis is provided Provided to the other conveyor tools, the natural integration point between this and the migration toolkit for applications, a new report that shows the relationship between applications and data sources, uh, a bit like the existing dependency graph. And the nice thing about um, Diva, like MTA, is you can analyze multiple applications in a single uh, analysis run. So this is the sort of information it provides in a visual sense, the relationship between applications, data sources, and also, um, it will also give you uh, information about transaction dependencies, so you can look to optimize um, your how your transactions are executed, get as, as get them as parallel as possible. Okay, then. So I think that is everything I want to mention, other than giving you a plug for Conveyor.io. If you haven't subscribed already, then please do so. Right. Okay then, Brian, I'll hand back to you. Is there, is there any questions that we would like to cover today? We do have some questions, Phil. So I'm gonna start off and if you wanna unshare your screen, I'll give you the first question. Um, so from Richard, what is the value of using Kubernetes versus OCP constructs? Um, for example, ingress versus routes, et cetera. Um, well, it's because it's it's community centric. So OpenShift is obviously a commercial Red Hat product, whereas Kubernetes is an open source project, and Conveyor is all about community. Yeah, so we don't want to um, ring fence our solution into any particular enterprise version of the Kubernetes platform. We want it to be suitable for all. But we, you know, the, the demonstration I've given you today was. Con, um, was the Tackle project deployed on OpenShift. So it is very much compatible with OpenShift as well. Yeah. Excellent, okay, good. And then the next question from Michael, um, 
He has raised awareness of MTA and MTC um, to his client. Are there any plans for a similar solution for Tackle? I'm not sure I understand the question. I am not familiar with those acronyms. So, Michael. Just, can you just, talk, just, just, just repeat the question, please, Brian? And let, yeah, let try I've raised, he, Michael has raised awareness of MTA and MTC to his client. Are there mm -hmm. plans for a similar solution for Tackle? Right, okay. So, ultimately, um, what we are looking to do is productize uh, what we've developed under Tackle. Um, into the migration toolkit for applications. So the, my, what we know is the migration toolkit for applications at the moment, which is just the analyzer tool, will become a superset of what it is now, and it will include the application inventory, and it will include Pathfinder, and it will also have be integrated to the existing MTA as well. So it, it will become a, an official Red Hat downstream product, product, as well as being an upstream open source project. Okay. And I'm pretty sure you may have already just answered this question, but I'll answer it from Mohit, who said, who asks, how um, how do MTA cloud and container readiness rules how are they related to Pathfinder? And again, sounds like you may have just answered that. Um, right. Okay. So what the the cloud readiness rules within what the the questions within Pathfinder. Um, are designed to pick up on, say, some cloud native anti patterns. And those are the sort, the, the questions are potentially um, encouraging the, the disclosure of information that can't necessarily be determined from the analysis of source code. Yeah. Whereas what Migration Toolkit for Applications does, the cloud readiness rules within that look for certain cloud native anti patterns, such as RMI calls, RPC calls. Uh, hard-coded IP addresses, things of that nature. So things that we can detect in the code, MTA is the right vehicle for uh, highlighting those particular issues that need to be changed. And the certain characteristics that can't be detected through the code, and that's what we're hoping the interview process that is you know, driven by the assessment questionnaire will surface. Does that, does that make sense? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so, yeah, appreciate it. So John asks, um, are there any efforts to integrate the .NET API port analyzer to migrate .NET apps to OCPM RHEL? Um, I wasn't aware of that, application, of that, of that particular application. Um, our focus has been mainly on, on, on Java applications, but um, and, and certainly from an analysis point of view, um, and all wind up can only cater for either clear source files, you know, so decompile as uh, Java files. Um, it can't decompile um, C sharp or ASP.NET type applications. Um, but you know, if we think this the it's worthwhile doing and is potentially a good candidate for inclusion in Tackle, then it's a community based thing, you know. And you know, what you know, bring it to the, if it's an open source project, bring it to the community. And, and let's let's make it part of it. You know, it's it, the idea is that we want to you know bring together all the MM tooling, all different use cases, um, under one umbrella. So we, we you know we are not we have no prejudice about which technologies we support or don't support. Yeah. And on behalf of the Open Source Program Office, we like that answer. So <laughs> that's <laughs> it's good. We're working together. So Langdon has a, a question. Um, he asked, just to clarify, could you please tell us what you mean by MAA and perhaps give a couple of example products aside from what you've been talking about today? All right, okay. AMM, so um, AMM. application modernization and migration, yeah? So um, this would be typically um, moving applications from one platform to another or one particular runtime to another. Um, or changing the dependencies that an application relies upon. And so, for example, um, you could have an application that's deployed on, say, WebSphere, and you wanted to, it's a simple application that just uses the server technologies, and you wanted to move it across onto the less expensive Tomcat runtime. That could be one particular migration path. Um, you might have an application that's compiled using Oracle JDK, 
and your organization is adopting open jdk uh, and you want to know if there's anything that's unsupported um within open jdk if you want to migrate the application um so you know the the only tools that i'm really cited on um in terms of the emm world are the ones that um I, i've discussed today i know this tooling that IBM has developed proprietary tooling to support migrating across to WebSphere from other application servers. I, I, I don't know the names off the top of my head, um, but the principles are you have an application that's built and deployed on one set of technologies, and you want to move it to another set of technologies or another platform. And the AMM tooling is the vehicle that helps you determine what needs to be done and uh, executed as well. Yeah. Okay, good to know. So it looks like we've gone through the questions from our audience. Um, so I think we can basically wrap this up. Phil, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking through Conveyor. We've been working with your team for a while on a lot of this. So happy to see this uh, growing and maturing and getting out there. That's great, Brian. Thank you. And as we have more, I'd like to come back and demonstrate what we develop in the future as well. So thanks for your time, everybody. Thanks for turning up. Yeah, we'll be happy to have you on, on board. So with that, we'll wrap up another edition of Community Central. Thank you all for joining in. Look for recordings on YouTube and the source later today. Until the next time, be safe, be well, and have a great day.